Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. This is episode number 435. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, everybody. What a pleasure to be here with you guys this morning. You know, every day that that uh, we're here serving the Lord is a day to rejoice. Isn't that right? It is. Um, we got a lot of things to talk about. First thing I want to mention is thank you guys so much for praying with us um, about the, the drones that I, I saw that were going to be used in an attack because we saw that unfold, didn't we, over in Israel. And thank God... Uh, 99% of the drones and the missiles fired at Israel didn't make it. Didn't make it. Now, that, that whole situation is still in flux because I think mm-hmm. Israel is supposed to give a response. Oh, we uh, just uh, pray uh, peace. Yeah, and when, when you understand the, the, the mentality of the Middle East, that will cause Iran to have to respond to their response. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, what, I, what I'm seeing, you know, I had uh, – uh, one guy I correspond with sends me a, a picture, and it's this guy driving. You can tell he's disappointed. He said, <laughs> and it was another morning where the apocalypse didn't happen, you know, because everybody's saying, this is it, this is it, this is it. And what I'm seeing, guys, is that the chess pieces are being set in place. Mm-hmm. And it is coming, and we need to be in prayer. I, I think that the the, the, the the prophetic right now, the, the, as far as the – end time prophecy stuff being fulfilled is being set into overdrive and if there was ever a time to be in constant watching a constant prayer it's right now it really is but i i know we've got a job to do we've got a harvest to bring in and it's it's quite the challenge in my viewpoint and so i think we've got more time i really do that's just how i feel but i i am ready any day i will so rejoice when we See, Jesus is coming back after us. Oh, my goodness, because things look really rough in places. It does, and, and I, I think part of this, and this is something God told me years ago when I was praying about it, and I was seeing all the stuff getting set up, and, and God said, what's it going to take to wake up the body to where it stays awake? And and I could almost sense in the spirit, it's like, oh, boy, the prophecy is getting ready to hit the fan because you know, it's, it's like after 9-11, people for about three or four weeks, every church was full. Everybody was, you know, they were going through the motions of seeking God. And as soon as nothing happened after that, everybody went back to normal. And so is it going to be one thing after another, after another, after another happened to get the body of Christ to be awake and to get out of this techno sorcery slumber of Babylon, what what's it going to take to knock us out of the the comfort of Laodicea? And and so I've, I've been praying that God wake you know wake us up, let us not let us go through the easy path of waking up, Father. Stir your people, and I think that's one of the reasons why we have begun seeing systematically around the world remnant members waking up. And it's just like they wake up one morning, and remember how when you came out of that depression, everything was different? It looked different. It, it yeah. was like the light bulb came on. And and all of a sudden, they're, they're saying, boy, church as usual really stinks. And, and, and all, the, all the stuff that we have fallen for really stinks. And they start opening up the Word of God for themselves, and they start seeing uh, what's really going on. And I, I pray that there's more waves of that that happen. But at the same time, uh, I, I, and I think that's what it takes to wake up the remnant. I think that the rem, the remnant are kind of like God's special forces that you always send them in before you send in the regular troops. But I, I think there's going to have to be some things rough, sustained roughness, if you will, to wake up everybody else because they are they are that in slumber. So that's why we need to be prayerful. We need to be prepared. And we need to know that if there was ever a time in history for the body of Christ to bring its A game, it's right now. I agree. I think we've all got to be looking and watching and getting ourselves as straightened up as we can, which has really been a challenge for me through the years. But I've, without God's help, I would have not been able to. But God's been so faithful, so wonderful. Coming back from Dallas, I was, I was the whole time I was singing and in prayer and stuff. 
And uh, I, I kept on telling God, I said, you know, it would be really easy for you to deal with me if I just get out of your way, <laughs> you know, and, and just trying to confess things before God because sometimes we're our biggest problem. It, it, it isn't even the devil. It's the, it's the ruts that he's got us in. And I've been, and I've been saying, God, get me out of my rut, get me out of whatever I need. And, and this, the song that just kept, and it's still, even this morning, it, it keeps on coming up is, is the old hymn, Learning to Lean. Mm-hmm. It's it, all about that. I mean, and submit. Yeah. And, not, and, and kick the devil out because he's gained such strongholds in most people's lives. Uh, and they don't know it. I mean, I, I didn't know what bad shape I was in. No. I just thought it was, it was a depression, mostly. And, and the way they're, because, you know, we've, we've watched some things that have really disturbed me of, of seeing what some preachers are preaching and different things. And it's almost like, and it, it, this, this is crazy doctor, it's almost like we're becoming gods or something, you know, because of who we are in Christ and all this stuff. And it's such a perversion of the gospel. Guys, we are not, we are not in a Marvel comic movie where we're superheroes and that we're bulletproof on all this. This, this. this is a lie of the devil. It causes us to get raised up in pride. That we need, the only time that we're strong is when we're completely yielded to Jesus and completely in his hands. And he's and he's directing us and giving yes. us discernment, giving because, us discernment, I mean, giving we us wisdom. We were both in churches where there there was a lot of error, yeah. And and we've had to try to find our way out of that and not lose respect for people that taught us, you know, truths. But there's just just some kind of conglomeration that's been established in the churches, and and even now, you know, I I look at everything. I, I'm open to God correcting me on anything, and I'd get up here and say, man, I was wrong on this or wrong on that because we've been wrong so many times. Yeah. We've had to change things as God's shown us things, and um, I, don't, I don't want to do anything outside of God's will. But, it's, but when you have like a whole bunch of different perspectives and opinions just being promoted at one time, you know, it's. I think it's wisdom to just sit back and pray and look at everything, um, because I just don't jump quickly anymore. I just, I've just learned. You know, years ago, when I was um, just coming out of my bondage, and then all the occult community came after us, and and people were showing up with crying kids, and and there were kids I knew that were in trouble, had no way to to get them safe. Um, I, I mean, I was so apt back then to just make an emotional decision. Well, you know this is what we have to do. You know this is the right thing. And just boom, boom, boom. Because it was, it was involved with kids and things like that. And I had no idea of the immensity of what I was dealing with. I had no idea of how intricate this system was that Satan had created. And so you can't just jump and make a knee-jerk reaction based on your emotion, based on even what you think is, okay, of course this is the right thing to do because we don't see what God sees. And he, there's been times that we've, we've just followed what God says and not, not really understanding why, but we would, would do exactly what God said. And then we'd find out later, oh, that's why God told us to do that. Yeah, and, you know? and so many times we, we think because we watched one little video or, or something on YouTube that we have all the facts. And that's not the truth. Everybody jumps because, you know, in the old day where everybody was trying to get the scoop, you know, in the news industry and everything, and then they had to go back and retract it because they only had like a tenth of the information. Mm-hmm. We're seeing the same thing with Christian ministries right now on YouTube. They, the minute something comes out, they want to be first because that gets more likes or mm-hmm. whatever and is monetized better on, on YouTube instead of said, and, and the Bible says that we we're supposed to be quick to listen, slow to speak. You know, uh-huh. you, you, you sit back and, and, and you, you, you need to gather all the facts because Nobody has all the facts about anything. That's why we need to we need to pray to seek wisdom from God about doing anything because the the news media is is propaganda anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of times people will just jump on one thing with not even knowing all the the details of it. and uh, and I, I'm kind of and we're we're so quick to. Uh, just moving in almost anger with only having half the information. 
I mean, that's that's that's. I think that's indicative of the modern church. Uh, I remember when the things happened with uh, Jeremiah Johnson and Dista Vitriol and, and different things, and I've seen that over and over and over again, Mary. Uh, we, we know all the emails I've gotten with uh, flat earthers that uh, I was treated better by angry, drunk military when I was in the military. That, uh, I, in fact, they used some cuss words. I had to look up, see what they were. I was like, oh, they created new ones, you know, that they were being. And, and we, we see this all the time. The part of what Babylon has done is they either overwhelm us with contradictory information or they just give us half information and they play on emotion. And what they've done, Mary, is that it has caused the body of Christ. That had, social media has brought out the worst because people will say stuff online that they would never say face-to-face with somebody. And it has, it has caused us to lose our Christ-likeness. And we, we need, in all these things, we, if, if, it, if, if you don't pray through it, you better back off. And in, in the days where we're yeah. headed, if you don't pray through and get all the, all the information, you better back off. And it's better to say nothing than to say all the wrong things and end mm-hmm. up having the devil use your mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's what, uh, one of the things I want to talk about, I was really trying to research so I wouldn't get anything wrong on this. Uh, because it's right here in our backyard, uh, and I'm sure most of you have seen it on social media about the Stronger Men's Conference, that the James River Assembly Church, which is a, a mega church in Springfield, Missouri, um, just had. And what happened, and I, I am so glad I saw this because I didn't even know they were having the conference. I'm that much out of the loop, I guess. Uh, but I would have not heard about this, I don't think. And boy, do we need to pray about it. Um, what happened is they had they opened it up with uh, a man, a performer, sword swallower, Alex Magala, and I saw the the video of where he gets up there and he um, he's got a pole and he takes his shirt off, you know, kind of moving like a performer does, and then he uh, climbs this. I think he licks the sword, puts the sword down his throat, climbs this pole, and then descends it in such a, a quick manner that, I mean, if he hadn't caught himself, it would have d- disemboweled him. I mean, he, he would have been dead. Um, and I, I have trouble with that stuff anyway. Yeah. I just think there's a disrespect for life in that. You know, life's dangerous enough as it is, <laughs> other than, you know, going and jumping off buildings. or. Um, but anyway, uh, this happened... And then I guess it was the next day, a, a pastor named Mark Driscoll. Now I don't know that much about Mark Driscoll. I know he's um, some people don't like him because he's um, he says things in a certain way, but he was actually a friend of the pastor of James River, and he had been there and spoke before. So when he got up to to do his speech about I think it was an Elijah anointing, he got on on stage and got was very humble, got down on his knee, took his hat off. And he said that he'd been up since 1 in the morning, and he was praying for the church. And what he went on to say was uh, pointing out that that this was like a pole like a stripper uses. And this guy took his shirt off and uh, said that they had let Jezebel in. Well, then the pastor of James River stopped him and said, you're out of order, and said, you're done, and had him taken off the the stage. Stage. Then there was a disruption in the crowd. Uh, Like some people were saying, bring him back and different things. But anyway, he got up and used um, the one scripture where if, you know, a brother offends you. Yeah, Matthew 18. uh, And so so he used that, and that was uh, all I had seen at first. Later on, they showed that he, he went and talked to Mark Driscoll, brought him back on stage later, and said that, and Mark Driscoll apologized for uh, not talking to him before because that was Pastor Lindell's problem, is that he didn't come and talk to him about that before he did it. Um, and so he apologized. He said, I respect authority. And that was that. Now, as far as I know, Pastor Lindell has never made a statement so far apologizing or, or addressing having this guy that in there to do this. Now, when you look, I, I looked at everything I could because you'll have some people, like one one pastor that I just love was saying, you know, you can't bring somebody like that in a church. Well, it wasn't a church. 
it was a stadium that they that they had rented. Um, but nevertheless, this was a gathering of church Believers, people. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, I I didn't even know what this thing was, but I guess in a previous year they had Chuck Norris come in in a tank. In a tank. <laughs> And so, you know, that, that would, if you're looking for entertainment, that'd be entertaining. Um, but this is what, this was what one of the, uh, the um, little articles that I read, and it, and it wasn't about this conference, it was just talking about um, how this Alex Magala had come from, I guess, a uh, dirt poor bad boy, it says, from a sleepy Moldovan town, and, uh, it's even more shocking that he's living a double life as a male stripper. One, uh, and and I did see, I had to quit looking because it had pictures of him that were really bad. Um, one was with a woman with her backside. It was just horrible, so I just quit looking at that. I was just trying to find people that could give facts and uh, said that he's a crowd favorite in some of the hottest gay bars in L.A. and Las Vegas. And I did see that several times, that they reported that, that that's what he has done in the past. Now, one other guy said that he is he's saved and is involved in some California church. So maybe this was before. before. And maybe they knew that at that church. I, I don't know. Uh, I, w- I got sick to my stomach when I watched it uh, because I thought, oh, my word, he's right. They've just opened up a door there. And, they, and I'm, they wouldn't have known it, but they have opened up a door because that was... You know, anytime there's a pole there, that's why they use poles in strip joints where women dance around them. It's it's a phallic symbol. It's, it's an Ashtaroth pole. Yeah, uh, and so anyway, I, w- I was totally stunned when I saw that part. And I thought, you know, this is these are men coming in here, and probably a lot of them have struggled with pornography. Maybe some of them are struggling with homosexuality. And so you've got somebody in there in that, that kind of position. I have. I will tell you unequivocally. I think this was a very bad decision to have this. Very bad. And in fact, even before Mark said anything, I was one of the things I saw online that was that same day that that happened. A woman said, "You know, my kids are in here, and this was going on." And she was actually a member of James River, and she was very distraught over it. But we we need to understand the the other side of the story with this is that this church is under the bullseye. From the occult, because mm-hmm. that pastor has made stands against yoga. He has made stands against the LGBT agenda up in Springfield. And so one of the things I, I was praying this morning, and God said, they have a seven to ten year plan on destroying this church and taking him out. And, and so, so I think there's a lot of infiltrators already in his well, ministry. Well, I'm telling you, this was many years ago, like yeah. over 20 years ago. We know of one infiltrator that was in there yeah. because of the family. Um, and so this has been going on for a long time. And so I was just in tears yesterday um, because I, I was thinking about this. And and now at the same time, I'll tell you this, uh, that Mark Driscoll, was, was, he's been exposing the Jezebel spirit in the churches. It's what I saw on social media. And so I do believe he's right. I believe that that, that opened something up. And, and so we're going to be praying. I ask you to pray with us that that would close. I mean, S- Springfield is a specific um, area of concern for the Ozarks. I mean, there's a huge community of homosexuals, lesbians. And I know this for a fact, there's a huge portion of that that are in witchcraft. Yeah. So, so you're talking about probably calling for outside groups and everything else. You know how they did with Donald Trump, and they were all that, that's probably being done against this church. Um, and they they follow the the regular path of most of the churches. They just did an Easter egg hunt, things yeah. like that. So the typical assemblies. They're of that they're going to know the doors that they can hit these people through. They've both been through, you know, both times that they. I don't even know if if they considered these attacks, but both times when he confronted things like yoga, there were attacks against him after. And so I've been praying. They wouldn't know me 
if they saw me. But I have been praying for them for years because I know I know that the the enemy's worried about something or he just let them go. If this yeah. was just a, a a big nothing burger church, or that was causing more trouble than good, he'd let them go. He wouldn't attack. But there's there's a definite attack against him. Um, and I've heard him preach several times. As I, he's on sometimes on uh, Sunday mornings, and I'll be up and and have that going while I'm doing things. And I he has some good sermons. And so the way that I look at this is is this is another thing that God's allowing to be exposed, so that there's a chance for yeah. repentance. There's a chance for turn turn from the entertainment side of things and get back to the word that's what i believe God and is. It, it, it shows a gap in the armor of the mega church model that uh-huh. there has to be entertainment with it uh there was a i thought it was a, a hilarious movie that mike lindell helped make and one of the baldwin boys was in it it was called church people and it was this mega church and they had to keep on coming up with bigger and bigger and bigger things to draw the crowds and the and the pastor would had he had his own Superman suit and was going with a Segway all throughout the church and stuff. And uh, they were actually got to the place where they were actually going to do a live crucifixion on on Easter Sunday, and and you know God moved and and stopped it. And it was and the part of the movie was let's get back to the preaching of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And I I think that the church as a whole, guys, whether it's a Bible conference, anything. We got to get out of infrontation mode, and we got to get into empowerment mode. We need correction. We need instruction. We, we, we need all empowerment. Need it. We all need it. And uh, uh, otherwise, we we turn these things into a circus. And uh, you know, it, it's jokingly when you look back into the original Latin when the when the Catholic Church came up with the name church, the same root word is the same word used for the Roman circus. And, well, and it's, it's time for us to be the assembly yeah. of, 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 of God's people and once let's, again. And let's pray for this Alex Magala. Yeah. Because if, if he did go to a church, if he is involved in a church, uh, he still has that spirit on him. He does. They've not and, taken him through deliverance. And so we'll pray. If he's not saved, we pray he's saved. If, uh, and we ask that he would, God would deliver him. Uh, you know, if he's, if, imagine if that's true that he was a dirt poor bad boy from a sleepy Moldovan town, I mean, this would be his dream of getting fame and, and money and things. And so so he would be caught in that trap. Yeah. And we need, to, we need to pray for him. We need to pray for the church. Uh, we need to pray that we all are hearing from God and, and being corrected where we need to be corrected. Um, well, if you remember, what's the first thing I saw when I saw him when, when, he, when he slid down that pole and stopped inches away from that sword on the ground? I said, there's no way he could have done that without a spirit protecting him. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I mean, I mean, there's, I I don't know that anybody that would put a sword down their throat, Mike. That's just, it's just a demonic act, yeah. in my view. That's the way I look at it. So, so we need to pray and just hold that that church up in prayer, um, because they they are marked for destruction by mm-hmm. the occult. They really have been, and uh, so we're going to keep them in prayer, and. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, just what God was showing me this week, and um, I wanted to have Mike talk about it because I think what, what we're dealing with is, you know, um, and Mark Driscoll's talking about Jezebel in the church, but Jezebel had a, a wicked, wicked daughter named Athaliah, and we've talked about her before, but I, I'm wondering um, if she might not have even moved with that ancient spirit, Anana. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think I'm seeing a correlation of what's going on in Springfield with the Athaliah spirit, and that's probably in a lot of places, because she she held would have held the anointing of both Jezebel and Ahab, so she would have had like that that dual male female thing going on, uh, and that's definitely in in Springfield, it and is. Springfield's very specific for God's plan. Um, well, I think that's the reason they went after it because there was a great revival that established the Assemblies of God there. Mm-hmm. There was also a great revival that established the Bible Baptist. Baptist we have two yeah. major church, international church denominational headquarters up there. So there's a reason that they took it by storm. Yeah. And so there, that plan's there. And so God had taken me to Second Chronicles, the 23rd chapter, and it goes down through there and tells you what was going on to where... Uh, it leading up to Athaliah's death. And what I noticed so significant is 
is they made sure that the gates gates of the of the temple were guarded. Yeah. And and I think that's an indicator of what we're supposed to do today. I think we have to guard the gates of God's house. I don't think we can just, you know, not um just say all this open door policy again. You know, I, I think anybody should be able to walk into the door unless it's somebody that's coming in there to shoot everybody up. And so I mean, I mean this in, is a in different this day, day. You have to have guards yeah. that are guards. And so but as far as just the God. general public, somebody needs to be able to come into the church. But I can tell you, once you come in the door, if you know after you're there a while, you need to be had some counseling. You need to have some mentorship on how to get your life okay. Because you, then, if you don't do that, at some point, you're just going to gather a bunch of people that you know have an influence of demons on them, and you're going to have a mess. Yeah. And so uh, I think that that's something we should look at. I think that it was interesting after uh, Athaliah, you know, that after they killed her, that um, they went in and and uh, took the house of Baal, broke it down, broke the altars. You know, after after wickedness is stopped, there's a there's an opportunity to to rebuild, to to cleanse, and that that happens all throughout the Bible. Is and and I think that's what we're going to have to do today. I think the churches are so full of demonic power yeah well i mean there, there's lessons to be learned in this and when you would you know going all the way back to, to uh, chapter 21 this reads like a soap opera it really does and it's uh i wanted you to talk about that because even how athaliah's husband how he was involved in what he did and then that went on down to she went and she was just trying to wipe out anybody that was anointed. <laughs> yeah. When, when you look at this now, we all know Jehoshaphat and the wonderful things that he had done and how God gave him great victories and, and stuff. But then his son, Jehoram, when, when he takes over, he has a choice. <clears throat> and I think with every generation in the church, we have a choice as just we pass on the torch. And he saw how God had blessed Jehoshaphat but at that time, Mary, when you, when you look historically, Jezebel and Ahab was ruling northern, the northern tribes, which was called Israel. By this time, there was, you know, after Solomon, there was the dividing of the kingdom. So after that, when you see Israel, you're talking about the ten northern tribes up there. And then, then you have Judah, which was basically Judah and Benjamin. And so they're, they're ruling over Israel and Mary in a white ivory tower, in a white ivory castle, mm -hmm. okay, the, a white ivory palace. And under Jezebel and Ahab, there was great prosperity, okay? So Jehoshaphat's son says, I, I have one or two choices. I can either look at how my father did things, or I can look at how the northern tribes, which are moving in greater prosperity right now, and I can do their ways. Ooh, a money thing. Money, money. And how many times, Mary, right now in the church, the church has looked at the way the Masonic things are done or the way that the New Age things are done. And uh, in, in fact, um, Paul McGuire, in one of his books, documents how that at Wheaton College, when they were formulating this thing of how to have mega churches, kind of like the one we're talking about, and there's some other ones that... And let me tell you something. James River is like 99% on, okay? They, they've they not gone the way... Of, some of these other mega churches are, are goat farms. That's the only way of calling it. But Mary, when they, when they uh, were putting this together and they were going to develop classes on it at Wheaton College, they went and hired New Age gurus to come and teach them how to do it. Mm -hmm. So we, we went to Mystery Babylon. That's exactly what he's doing. How do they do it up north? Right. And the first thing he does is he kills his whole family. He kills all his brothers. Anybody and, that could, and there could was, and come there were, against him? Anybody that could come against them or, or place claim, including some of the princes from Israel that were, that were visiting that might have a claim. He killed those too. That's why he was attracted. Once he opened the door to that, he opened the door to Athaliah because he was attracted to that same spirit. And, and his reign was rough. And and God made it rough, but I thought I thought it was interesting, you know, in, in reading the, this whole thing, Elijah takes care of him by writing a letter. Elijah, God did because I mean Elijah's up there dealing with with uh, Ahab and Jezebel. Okay, uh -huh. he just simply writes a letter and says, "Because you have caused Judah to play the harlot, 
God is going to destroy you with an intestinal disease. He just wrote a letter. The guy comes down with an intestinal disease, and and, and a very painful one. And when he dies, it's like Judah had relief. In, in verse 20 of, of, of verse 21, it says, And he was 32 years old when he became king. He reigned over Jerusalem for eight years, and to no one's sorrow, he died. And Mary, they wouldn't even bury him with the kings. They buried him in the city of David, but they wouldn't even bury him with the kings because he was such a horrible. He lost all honor, yeah. didn't he? And and his and his son, which had a short lived reign, wasn't any any better. And he ended up going in battle and getting wounded and stuff. Then after he died. Ath- uh, Athaliah rose up, and which was his grandmother, and says, I'm going to become king. And she went and did the same thing her husband had done before uh, before she married him. He, she was killing anyone who might have claim to the throne. Anybody, because under, under the economy of the Old Testament, there were only three people that had the anointing, the king, the prophet, and the priest. She went after the anointing of leadership. I will destroy everything that had, that has any right to leadership except me. That's that's what the Athaliah spirit does, and in today's world, what we're seeing that, and I, I think sometimes in in uh, yeah, we we have a term around here getting arcocited because of the Clintons. We mm-hmm. I, I think there's some of that going on, but how much character assassination do we see? Mm-hmm. We're seeing that right now with a former president that. Don't anybody ever step out of line. Don't you ever come against the deep state. We're, we're seeing it in the world. We're seeing it in the church. But you know what? God's getting ready to deal with a lot of this. Because her reign was short-lived because all of a sudden the high priest began to strengthen himself and he made a covenant with the captains of a hundred and they began, they began sending things in order. But one of the things that jumped out at me, Mary, that just, and I've actually got this, I want to write this use this in a book, when, when, they, when they look at their preparing to make their stand. In 23 and 10, it says, And when he had set every all the people and every man with his weapon in his hand from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple. Oh, let's see, that's the verse I'm wanting to use. I may have highlighted, oh, the one up above that. It says that they... They went and got the spears and the long and, long and the short shields of David for this war. Mm-hmm. They, they, had, they had been set. They were the instruments of war of David, and they said it's going to take those instruments to take down Athaliah. Let me tell you something, body of Christ. David is a type and shadow of Messiah. He, the Messiah is going to sit on the throne of David. There are weapons of spiritual warfare in Messiah. Mm-hmm that are getting ready to be released, to take down, whether you want to call her Anana, whether you want to call it Jezebel, whether you want to call it Athaliah, God is getting ready to do a clean sweep because we, we see this sweep as, as all this is going on. Jehu's up there cleaning up the northern tribes, getting rid of Ahab and Jezebel. And, and within, within just a little while, he's taking care of Athaliah and the southern tribes. God is getting ready for the sake of the remnant, for the sake of his great name. God is getting ready to deal with a lot of things, and he's getting ready to release new prophetic prayer. He's getting ready to release fresh anointings. He's getting ready to release spears and swords and shields in the kingdom of God that we have not seen since the early apostles in the book of Acts that were personally trained by Jesus. We're getting ready to see these things, and they're going to, and you know what, Mary? A lot of them are going to be Mr. and Mrs. Nobodies. They're going to be like John the Baptist who were on the backside mm-hmm. of the desert, and nobody knows who they are. Mm-hmm. And But you know what they have been doing? They have been training. They have been consecrating themselves. They're, they're not new converts. They are ones that are seasoned that have, have been almost like when Moses was on the backside of the desert for 40 years, there was, there, was a, there was a 
cleansing and refining of Moses. These guys have been on the backside of the desert, and God has been cleaning and refining them and preparing them and putting a fresh word in their heart. And they will not yield to Athaliah. They will not yield to Anana. They will not yield to this Jezebel spirit. They will not yield to Babylon at all. But everywhere they see it, they want to destroy it and bring it out of the Mm -hmm. church. And they will not compromise. And they'll have to have gone through, if they're married, you'd have to have gone through a process like we did. Yeah. Kicking out Jezebel and Ahab. Because, I mean, it was, so, it was so integrated into us. Oh, my word. I look back and just think, by the grace of God, did we make it? Um, I, I wonder how many homes that, Jahab, that Ahab and Jezebel reigned and, and nobody knew it. And that's all they that's all they've seen from generation to generation to generation. Oh, I, th- I think it is for sure generational, and it just passes on down because that's what your kids see. You know, I remember the day when uh, God told me I needed to ask forgiveness for not teaching my girls to respect you. I mean, it was just it was just one thing after another. He would and and every bit of this was cutting the power supply off to Jezebel. Yeah. Every bit of it. And, and you know, if you had, you were in a process of change too. Yeah. But I had determined in my heart, if the only way to break the Jezebel in me was to submit to you, no matter what was going on, that was what I was going to do. And it was very difficult because and it, and we were time already, I was really stuck on Well, stupid. we were already in this pattern. Yeah. We had the pattern going. And the last thing I wanted to go to my kids would have been an Athaliah spirit. Absolutely. You know, but but it was it was starting to work before we even knew to pray over the kids. And don't you think that a that's clue. a part of the enemy's plan to destroy the nuclear family of uh, you know a, a, a godly father, a godly mother, uh, you know, because in 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 our in our culture, a godly man is hard to find. That either he's an Ahab, or or he is some macho big big, you know, the other side. Okay, that he's vulgar and and too full of testosterone and everything else. I'm trying to find the right words to say it pleasantly, but it's just like one either end of the spectrum. Well, yeah, he's on have, the other end of the have spectrum. Have you guys ever heard the story of Smith Wigglesworth's wife? <laughs> you know, he wasn't saved, and she would go to church. And I hope I get this right. I just this is something somebody told me. I haven't read it, uh, but that but she would go to church and she would ask him every every Sunday if he would go with her. And he, I guess, he'd say some things and uh, she wouldn't go. And so she left one uh, Sunday to go to church. And when she got back, the door was locked. <laughs> so the next morning, Smith Wigglesworth gets up and unlocks the door and opens it, and she falls over because she she'd sit against the door. And fall, it fell asleep and fell over in the in the door. So she just gets up and she says, uh, "Can I fix your breakfast?" <laughs> and I'm telling you, uh, I don't think I would have probably handled it that good. I know I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. You'd have, uh, been, you'd have been a mad wet hand, I tell you right now. Well, I'd have broke in the window. <laughs> so you didn't keep me. Up. Um, that just shows how I am, though. Um, but but that, honestly, I think I think. If you want to break the Jezebel Ahab spirit that is in, I believe, most households, one of the two has to t- take the first step. Yeah. The, if, if you're a man and you've been under Ahab spirit, you would have to have to stand up and say, we're going to do things God's way. We're going to pray and, and do it that way. Even though, though the Jezebel spirit will stir up, uh, if the woman's under Jezebel, she will have to bend iron like I did. Because if you're, if you've ever been influenced by Jezebel spirit, it is so strong, guys. It is unbelievable. It's tied to witchcraft. It's tied to, to the kingdom of darkness with all the power behind it. Uh, and and you would have to have to say, I'm going to submit, and I'm going to trust God that He's going to take care of this, and I'm going to do what I know to do. And it's very difficult, but but I believe it's it's the only way to break free of that. And in this nation, it's so difficult because we've got a principality over Washington D.C. with that. Well, Jeze- Jezebel was the servant of Baal, and and it, like I told you before, that one person I dealt with that that had been one of the star families where they put him on the the points of the star, and then an entity can can work through that it they can't you know possess people but they can work through it and that's and what i pulled through that time wasn't a principality or anything it was something that was set i believe in within a ritual to get hillary in the white house 
Yeah. So, so if that's all going on, what do you think is going on in the second heaven? I mean, you're talking about major, powerful principalities. And what we've been in a process for almost 30 years is praying that the power supply get cut off. Yeah. And, and what, what's empowering the principality of Jezebel and Ahab? All the people in the homes. Yes. All the people in the homes, and especially in Christian homes, if that's going on, you are sending power up to those things. And they're up there just kicked back saying, hey, we got this thing. And it, it's very difficult to come out of it, isn't it? You, me it and is. you know. And you know, from speaking from the male side, what we have got to determine is we're going to do the right thing. We're going to put our wives first. We're going to do the right thing no matter how the devil convinces us inconvenient it is because Ahab used like and say, oh, would you, would you fix this for me? I'll buy some for some wood. No, get up off the couch, go get it done yourself and do it right and do it with the right spirit. And, 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 and let's say you're and, going to the other end of the spectrum. You set, your, you set your narcissism down, and you put your wife first. Yeah, because it can, it can work both yeah. ways. But I can tell you what I've seen. It's, it's why women get out of order is because they, they go into churches, the men won't do anything, and the women say, well, we got to take charge, we got to do this. And it puts them in a position, of, a vulnerable position. And so, but, but let me tell you something. <laughs> In that, in in a situation like ours, that Jezebel spirit was so powerful in our house. I mean, it 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 was putting you to sleep. Yeah, it was putting you to sleep with the anointing that's on your life that was always there, but it puts you in such a slumber. And so, when I was trying to fight it, I was trying to pray and do the right thing, but but. God had to show me step by step how to do, or it would have just kept going in a cycle and going in a cycle. And then what, the reason, you know why Satan wants a Jezebel and an Ahab spirit in a home? Because if he can separate you, because the whole time a Jezebel and Ahab's there, they're tr it's trying to get you to separate. It's trying to break your marriage up. It's trying to, to cause disruption, because that's the key. If they can divide you, they can destroy you. Yeah. And so one of the two people, if you somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do the first step, and the yeah. first step of the hard position of you're in. Mm -hmm. And a man would have to to stand up and 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 say to I wouldn't advise him to say it to his wife because that would really stir it up. But he would have to start binding a Jezebel spirit and Ahab yeah. spirit. Every, and, every morning we get up, and well, at least once a day we bind up Jezebel, Ahab, <laughs> Athaliah, <laughs> Leviathan, Lilith. They all, every principality, Any, every rule of darkness, every wicked no spirit. No influence in our family. Every watcher in their yeah. technologies, we bind it up. We, we stand in that mm -hmm. authority. And what I have found is the, the subtle influences, like the big ones you can catch, is the subtle ones that are just sneaky little boogers. All of a sudden, it begins backing them off. Because yeah, because there's a lot involved in it. Because I've, I've told folks before on the podcast, like Satan, would he's the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. He would point out every fault you had, everything, every reason I had to get mad, this, 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 this. And so I had to grab that and not come into yeah. agreement with it because then that was making the attack worse against you. Yeah, and of course I made it really easy on it back then oh, too. Oh, quit saying that. I you, did. You, you were not that bad. You're, you were a good man. It's just that, that stuff in me is, was so powerful that it was just, it was just, and, and you, you loved me, and you didn't Very want much, me yeah. to leave. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, I think one of the things that we need to do, because where, where I came from, I had no good examples, okay? I didn't have a good example. I didn't either. <laughs> and so what I had to do is get in the Word and begin to build in my mind a framework of this is what it should look like. Because until you can see it, you can never do it. And so you, you've got to, you, and uh, I think that's why uh, television and movies are so harmful, is that yeah, it's, it's, it's building really, the wrong images. Yep. And look, look what they did with uh, soap operas. Yes. Generations of women, they just sit and watch that all the time. There was no godliness in that stuff. I mean, or, that's... Or just, or just on the sitcoms. They, I did they took I us. <laughs> they took us from Leave it to Beaver and Father Knows Best to American mm -hmm. family or whatever it's called. And they, and they also will pro project idols to where the women will look at a man and say, oh, if I could just be married to somebody like that. 
that's a character. That's not who that person is. And and men the same way. They look at a woman and say, well, if my yeah. wife could just be like that. And what's, what's crazy is even the people playing the parts, like in these movies, mm-hmm. fall into that same trap because they're, they're acting with somebody and they actually fall in love with the character, not the actor or the <laughs> actress. And then they get out in the real world and what, they're married six months because all, all of a sudden the honeymoon's over and you found out that's not who they really are. They were, they were playing a part. Well, and it, it comes down to if you want a marriage to succeed, you have to prefer the other person. Yes. And you have to have to walk in love, and you and it's and that's that's why I know about the Jezebel spirit. I'm telling you guys, they're probably in a worse example of it than I was. I mean, it was terrible, and I guess I was born with it. Um, you know, it was in the family line and everything. But boy, and and I think you know what made it so bad for me is I saw my dad um, just oh man, my mom had it rough, and mom had her set of troubles too. She really did. Um, but it was just so rough in our house. And, you know, it's hard enough to, to deal with somebody that, that isn't that loving husband that everybody would want. But, I mean, we had such financial difficulty. Mom was always having to stretch food, make something out of nothing for meals. And um, she did the best that she could, I can yeah. tell you that. And my, I think my dad did the best he could. We were in an insane situation. There was witchcraft going on. And, and at the same nobody time, nobody could remember it. What was available in the church did not ever give them the equipment they needed to change or to bring any, any type of hope of any change. Well, m- my dad didn't go to church except yeah. up when you were pastor and he came there a couple of times and you baptized him. Mom would go, yeah. we'd go Christmas and, and, and Easter he became, sometimes. he became quite a bit different after he really. Yeah, you know, he got baptized and stuff. I think he really he became there was there was change. Yeah, there was a, change. There was change. He became gentler. And, uh, he never mistreated his grandchildren. No. And so we can we can say good things about uh, about our parents, but we both were raised in homes such dysfunction. It's a wonder that God could even get us okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, God can do anything, but I mean. <laughs> That's why we can give hope. We can give hope to people because uh, we've walked w- walked a rough road. This morning, as I was thinking this podcast, I, you know, I, I think back then it was just whatever I needed to get through the day to survive and just and just to survive. And now I spend more of my time more concerned about you. Like when we're preparing for the conference and stuff, I spend more time worrying about you because I know. There's a lot of hard work goes into this on, on both ends. And I spend more time worrying about you, and Steffi spends all her time worrying about, about both, both of us. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, Bless her heart. Well, I tell you what, though, we're, we're having some fun getting ready for this conference. We're really looking oh, forward to it. She, had, uh, she, she made some cinnamon rolls yesterday, and uh, I'm looking for some Baptists that need to speak in tongues because that will get them speaking in well, the tongues. Well, right I hope there. that they turn out. They say that you can freeze them if you wrap them really well, and so I, I couldn't make something like that that close to the conference. So I'm hoping that they turned out. I'll tell you, the kitchen was still smelling like cinnamon rolls this morning. I walked in there, and I thought, oh, heavenly scent. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mary, I, I think when we, we look back at this whole story, there's there's several things that, that really jump out as important. When the high priest, okay, they had... Taking care of Athaliah, the people coveted with themselves, between themselves, we are going to once again become the people of God. Mm-hmm. Remnant, this, this is an hour that maybe you say, I've never seen the church be what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've, nev- I've, never, to. I've never seen what a true <laughs> spiritual warrior is. I've never seen what a true man or woman of God is going to be. But I'm going to be it. Yeah, I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to get into prayer. And I'm going to tell the Lord, Send the fire. Send the fire and forge in me the character of Christ. Because, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that there are nine fruit of the Spirit and nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because it takes an aspect of the character of Christ to balance out the power of the Spirit. And when you don't have that, you're going to get off. And we need the character of Christ forged in us by the Holy Spirit, by that fire. That's why it was tongues of fire. Those, those were tongues, and not just one tongue, but multiple tongues of forging fire that empowered and, and, and forged in the character of Christ mm-hmm. into the early disciples and the early apostles. We need that today. We need to cry out for the fire, and not just wild revival fire, but life-changing, life-altering, character-forging fire fire of God. Mm. And when the, as soon as they made that covenant, they said, we need to put guards over the house of God. 
Now, let me tell you something. The house of God is, first of all, not just the building that you guys assemble in when, when you have your, your gatherings. The first one's your home. Yeah. And mothers and fathers are the gatekeepers of their house, not the kids. The mom and dad are. Because it's our job to protect our kids. And I, my goodness, what? Look at all the different avenues right now the enemy has uh, getting garbage into the houses. There, there were more ways than Carter has liver pills. That's why, that's why mamas and daddies need to have discernment and to hear from God and to pray over their kids. Mm, that's, why, that's why I love the kids coming to the conference. I do too. Because everyone that walks in that door, they've had prayer before they got there and prayer while they're there. <laughs> and, and loving on them while yeah, they're there. And, that's right. Making and, them, you know, some, and we have good parents bringing in kids here, but, you know, it's always been um, just crushing to me to see little kids that have never been shown love. And that's so important. That's why, like, I love the concept of Sunday school, is there's so many little kids that would go in those Sunday school classes and that teacher would love on them. Yeah. And later in life, they would always remember that. Yeah. And it could change their lives. I still, and I'm, I'm still trying to remember all the kids' names, but one of them, little John, sticks out uh -huh. with me like no other because he had come and talked to you about his chickens uh -huh. and how you liked eggs. I never saw a little boy so happy. He went and he hand-picked a bunch of eggs for yeah, you. he did. And he came in the next morning to that conference holding that bag of eggs. And I bet you he was ten foot tall. <laughs> he was, He's so precious. Let me tell you, all the all the kids. All, all are, the kids are all that whole family. They're just they're great. They're so I tell you one thing that keeps me because there's there's a lot of work putting these conference on, especially the way that we do it. And the end of the last conference, and we had such a great time with Pastor Paul Begley here and and the others that were here. But at the end, you had went and you had gotten some little stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. And all the little kids come running up to me to show me their stuffed animals and just to love them before they left. That two, three minutes of that made all the work of the conference yeah, worthwhile. It does. And we got some more. We got some more. <laughs> we, we, made, we made another run. And then some of them are absolutely adorable. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. And we, we need to expose. And one of the things I was so happy about having Paul here, and we're going to hopefully, God willing, have him in the fall. Um, because he was under the, the anointing of Lester Summerall, it's a, so there's a mingling of that anointing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want a generation exposed to that. Yeah. You see, there's, 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 there's both information and impartation, and both of these go on in, in the conference. And what I wanted them exposed to was the type of anointing that was on Lester Summerall. And, 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 of course, his wife is, is this such a sweetheart. And one of the things I didn't know about their testimony, when he's, he's in, in Bible college under Lester Summerall, and he's exploding with the power of God, and they're holding revival meetings, uh, the woman that became his wife had a heart disease that at one of the meetings God healed. He prayed for her and healed her, oh, then he started how, dating her. Isn't that great? And, and, and so, you, you can, and so there's, there's this, this track record of this God that's supernaturally moving. And we, we need to hear those stories. We, we, do. we, we it, it needs to stir up faith on the inside of us and, and be exposed to the anointing. Uh, conferences are not about being entertained. They're about the information that we need to prepare for it, about being challenged, because it has to knock us out of our comfort mm -hmm. zone. If it doesn't knock us out of our comfort zone, the devil is the one who put us in that comfort zone because we're easy for him to handle. That's one of the ways that, that he tries to move is, is to get you – to where you're not pressing forward. You yeah. know, if you're not going forward in God, you're actually sliding backwards. Absolutely, because this this thing is a treadmill. It is. And the devil never yeah. lets it slow down. That's true. And and then and then third to be to be exposed to that anointing so that the, so that we're familiar with it, that we can sense the difference. Because I've been at some conferences where guys have come in that they invited them because they were big on the internet and they came in by another spirit. And boy, I mean, some of some of us, it's a hoo hoo hoo. No, no, no. We shut this thing down because it, it was it was it was horrible. But unless you've been around that anointing, you don't know that. Unless you you can, unless you're familiar with how the spirit of God moves, the enemy can come in masquerading, mm -hmm. and 
I, I want them to touch the real. I want them to be around the real and to hear the real. This is what real preaching is. This this is this is the way the kingdom of God operates. Yeah, because we don't have a we don't have like a, a children's setting here no. for the kids all go in they stay with their parents yeah and so what we do is provide things that'll you know they can sit there and be in that presence and still like little books and stickers and and things that they're doing Steffi's just working on that right now and we've got so many kids coming this time uh she was gonna be do uh some teaching times but there's so many coming we can't get them all in the, our room that's established for that. So she's going to put stations in there with all these different things, activities. They can go in, and the kids have to stay with at least one parent. Yeah. And for safety reasons, because we got we have to leave the doors open, and uh, they have to stay with their parents. Yeah. I remember one conference I was at saying, any child left alone will be fed caffeine, sugar, and they've been given a free pumpy for their <laughs> before oh, we send no. them home. And all of a sudden, the parents, oh, we're watching our kids. But you know, the pastor was joking, but... Uh, that this 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 is a family time. It, it, it's a time for all of them to to feel the presence of God. We're going to try to have some activities. We just don't have the space mm-hmm. to do everything like we like to. But uh, we're excited about it, guys. Keep it in prayer. Yes, uh, we appreciate be, your prayer so much. We're going to be recording everything. We're getting ready to go through and double check all of the equipment. I've been updating the computer system and everything to make sure everything's working perfectly. Uh, so that we can have the videos up after the conference. And uh, I'm just looking so forward uh, to this conference. And it's, it's gone about not being deceived, and we're going to try to hit it from every angle because right now, in especially the Western world, deception is an overdrive. Mm-hmm. That everything is about deceiving, conning, uh, from the evening news to what's going on in our school system. Everything is about deception. And we're called, we're called to walk in truth. Mm-hmm. So we need to discern what is deception and then be the antithesis to it in our generation. And so, Father, give us the courage, Father, to raise up and say, I've had enough of Athaliah, I've had enough yes, of Jezebel, I've had, had enough, enough of Ahab. Father, there are Jehus, there are those that are going to rise up, raise that are going to set up. things in order. Yes, Father. And, Father, we just ask for a fresh anointing on them. Father, that even if they're weary in the battle, Father, I just ask there would be a refreshing come yes. on them, Father. Strength and let the Lord. Let the weary hands be strengthened. Let the weary hearts be encouraged, Father God, because the battle is ahead of us. Mm-hmm. But, Father, you're with us. Yes, you are. And we thank you that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.